Hello and welcome back to my channel. I feel like I'm celebrating this morning. Our bathroom is finished and I am going to have a soak in the bath this afternoon. Well, that's after we've been to Dunelm and bought some shower curtain rings because, uh, bless him, everything was completed by tea time yesterday. And Joe couldn't have a shower because mother had bought shower curtains but no rings. So we're going to Dunelm after we've put up this vlog and I've had some breakfast. It's been a good week on plan and um, I'm doing the on plan October but enjoying it as my kind of normal way of life now and I have been bang on plan every day this week with my usual routine of full healthy extras and 15 sins. I'm sorry if it sounds boring but I love it that much I don't want to change. I went to group this morning feeling um, really comfortable about getting weighed and everything and we went for a seven thousand mile step walk before group which was nice because the weather today is much much milder in Nottingham and although there's still quite a strong breeze the temperature is very different from yesterday isn't it Joe? Yeah a lot different. So we went out early this morning and had a really nice walk and uh, in fact part of the way through the walk we had to call at home so Joe could take his jeans off and put his shorts on because it was so nice. I was already prepared I am determined to walk in my shorts until Christmas. Let's see if I make it. So I went to group and again we have a standing consultant because our Naomi's away. Lovely girl called Sasha. Very nice meeting. Slightly different because all consultants are different. But yeah, queued for the scales, got on the scales and guess what? I've got back the two and a half pounds I lost last week. I wasn't confident that that was a loss I deserved last week and I did say I thought at least two pounds of it would come back. And it has. That's not due to overeating. Um, or uh, even for me eating the wrong things it is just a fluctuation I think in body uh, fluids body you know water levels so I'm really happy with that result because it takes me back to nine stone and half a pound which is really where I'd like to be I'd like to be between kind of I don't know nine stone nine stone three somewhere around there I am not committing to moving my target my target is nine stone seven I'm not moving it to nine stone and that is a promise and if I ever come on here and say I am going to do please bombard me with comments reminding me that I was not to do this and I'm going to tell you why I'm not choosing to do it a lot of it is because of my personality type I am stubborn and uh, I also don't live well with rules hard and fast rules and I know for myself that if I set my target wherever I set my target I'm always going to want to live at the bottom end of it so my target is nine stone seven which means I aim to be around the nine stone four if I was um, foolish enough to set my target at nine stone and I'm only talking about foolish enough for me lots of people will have a target of nine stone because it's right for them but if I set my target at nine stone in my head I would want to be 8 stone 11 and that is not a good place for me to be. My BMI is just about where I want it to be around 9 stone 1 and so I don't want to put undue pressure on myself because I know that I don't work well with pressure and I don't work well with rules. I'm a rebel. So if somebody tells me I've got to stay between like in my case at the moment 9 stone 4 and 9 stone 10 there's something inside me that wants to be at the bottom and when I'm at the bottom of that I can fall out the bottom. What I want to do and what I'm happy to do is say I want to live between kind of nine stone nine stone three. If I move my target to nine stone that's going to be the top end of my target and I wouldn't want to be in the top end of my target because it puts pressure on me not to go out of the top. So what I've decided to do is stick where I am around where I am now and pay for group might not be right to call myself a target member anymore. I'm, I'm not worried about that, what's in a word? It's about what works for me and that works for me and that puts no pressure on me and five pound a week, it's worth every penny and a lot more. So I'm gonna do that. I wanted to bring to you today one or two things that I either enjoy or that I am planning to enjoy. Uh, the first thing is the new beetroot Rivita crackers. Is that ink shot? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Oh, I'm getting good at this. 
Now I saw these on a shopping haul that um, Lisa and Rufus did from Beyond Authentic. I could go back and watch it again, but I can't honestly remember whether Lisa said they are a hex bee. I just asked Joe to look on the website and he can't find that they are. Now inside here there are six, four packets of six crackers. Each cracker is 25 calories. So I'm thinking, well, if a packet of six crackers is going to be a hex bee, that's 150 calories, which is a bit more than hex bees usually are. So if you know, can you tell me please? And if you know for sure that they're not, can you tell me please? Because I guess in my estimation, two crackers is going to be two and a half sins. I'm comfortable with that. But anything with beetroot in, I adore this stuff. So yeah, they're new. And we found those in Sainsbury's. We haven't found them in Astor or Morrison's yet, but we found them in Sainsbury's. My second thing is, um, I like this because I don't know whether it comes across on camera, but it's actually heart shaped. This is a less than 3% gammon joint, unsmoked. So that's free on plan. You don't need to worry about trimming it or faffing. I actually bought a, a gammon joint on uh, Thursday in Morrison's. But they do have quite a bit of fat on them. By the time you've faffed and trimmed it, I think I'd rather. This was no more expensive in Sainsbury's. This was £4 something. And it's less than 3% fat. So chuck it in the slow cooker and it will be delicious. So I shall do that within the next couple of days. Put it there. Um, this is a... I don't know if I've got the jar the right way, Jo. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. I'm, get, I'm getting really good at this today. Um, people will be thinking I can see after all. This is garlic granules and we've had garlic granules from, lot, from lots of different supermarkets and different stores. This one is by far our favourite. We find some of the others a bit harsh. This one is really nice. Now for a long, long time in uh, Asda this has been 74 pence. It's currently 49p? 59p. 59p. It's a really good buy and it is street, well we think, it's only our opinion, but we think it's streets ahead of any other garlic granules and we've tried all of the other supermarket brands and we've tried Aldi's and some from the little shops in town and things but this one is fabulous, really fabulous and for 59p you can't go wrong. So that's that. I'm always on the lookout for new fruit and new veg and especially speed fruit or veg. And Jo found this yesterday. Wrong way up. Oh. Yeah. Jo found this yesterday in Sainsbury's and it is sweet stemmed cauliflower. It's a bit like tender stem broccoli, yeah? Yeah. But is it white? Yeah, it's got white tips. It's got white tips. So sweet stemmed cauliflower. I'm not sure how many grams are in there, but it was two pounds. I think it's two portions. I think it's like 160. So two portions, because Joe's always telling me an average portion of veg is around 80 grams per, per, per portion per person. So if you were having four different veg, you'd have four 80 gram portions. That's how we work it anyway. But I think that'd be nice and that's gonna go on my, well, half of that is gonna go on my lunch plate with my lamb's liver today. And probably some steamed tomatoes. As I said earlier, my um, bathroom's finished and we have gone from, well, our previous black, black room, <laughs> Still Our previous bathroom was like the black hole of Calcutta, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah, it Joe was very dark. hated it. Had it put in when Joe was a baby. And in the early 90s, terracotta was quite in vogue. So I went for a very terracotta uh, tiled bathroom. And uh, it was tiled from floor to ceiling. It had some cream in it, but a lot of terracotta. And we, although we had old English white in the bath and the sink and the toilet, we then had a mahogany floor, which made it really, really dark. And because our bathroom is on the west side of the bungalow, it only gets sunshine at tea time and not for very long. So Joe always hated this bathroom. So when I said I was gonna have a new bathroom put in, he was like, that's a good idea, but please can we have something light and bright? And our builder, Steve, Steve the Hunk as I call him, has done an amazing job. We're really chuffed with it, aren't we? Yeah. And it is bright and light and it's not pale in places but I'm hoping to persuade Joe to do a little video at some point when he's got time and um, to show you what what we've done but it, we've gone really minimalist really simple and um, nice we, we, we chose a, a different we had a corner bath before with a canopy and everything which again made it really dark and this time we've gone for a pea bath and yeah 
Jo says it's nice because you can lie down in it. So I'm going to try it later with this. Now this is magnesium flakes, yeah? Yeah, magnesium flakes. I'm going to ask Jo to read you what it says on the packet, but this is one uh, oh, sorry, serving portion. What did you say? Use. One use. You put the whole of that into your bath. And it's really good for aching and tired legs and things like that. But I'm going to get Joe to read it to you. I can read it from here. Oh, can you read it from there? Yeah, it says, an aid, an aid to skin and bone health and relief from muscle stiffness and cramping. So I guess it's a bit like the days when we used to use Radox or Epsom salts. But this is, um, got this from the health food shop and um, it's going in my bath later today. So that's something, I think, is it three pound odd, something like that? Can't remember. Can't remember. But you can get, uh, we found in Sainsbury's yesterday, a big bag, which is probably more than a kilogram, of Himalayan salt, which does the same sort of thing. Or also, and they were seven pounds something. Or also, a, I can taste the salt in the air from that. Or also you can get a big bag of Dead Sea salt which does a similar thing. So once I've tried that, I'm going to treat myself on my next go to Sainsbury's and try the others. But on the other ones, you only put a couple of handfuls in. So something different. I fancy trying something new in my new bathroom. Right, so group this morning. Good. Uh, some good weight losses. Several gains, including mine. Something... I'm sorry, that's my phone. Something we were talking about, which I'm really passionate about, and I felt like being quite passionate about it in the meeting. Last week, the young lady who led the group had a number of leaves, and we were all given a leaf, and we had to turn it over for turning over a new leaf, and talk about what it said on the back of it, and how that affected us. And some of them said, you know, would it be like healthy extras, or one might have said speed, or one said, do you do SP days? Great variety. This week we were asked to look at where we'd like to be by next Saturday. And of course most people said they wanted to weight loss. So she said, right, talk amongst yourselves, have a little chat about how you're going to achieve it. And then we'll come back, we'll go around the room, and there are like two or three rows in a big, big circle in our room. And we'll, we'll ask you, where do you want to be for next Saturday? And how do you intend to get there? So yeah, it's really good, it makes you think. And then we started to go around the room and I was around the far side of the room. So I would say 80% of the people spoke before it got to my turn. And one after one after one, and we had other suggestions, but quite a lot of people were saying, increase my speed. I'd like to lose two pounds for next week. How are you going to achieve that? Increase my speed. I'd like to lose three pounds for next week. How are you going to achieve that? Increase my speed. A lovely girl said, I'd like to lose four pounds. I've got a plan. It's to do SP, so that increases my speed. And this pattern went round and round the room. And we often say that. I mean, I've said it on no end of occasions. I need to increase my speed. What we've been talking about, Joe and I, this week is um, the use of speed as part of our food plan or part of my food plan and how Naomi always talks about using speed. So when it came round to my, my part, part of the room, where would you like to be for next week? Well, ideally, maintain or half a pound either way. I'm not fussed. I want, to, I want to live in this place. So, you know, how do you intend to achieve that? I intend to achieve that by sticking to what is my normal plan, my four healthy extras, my 15 sins, a good amount of speed food, a reasonable amount of free food. And I don't eat... Uh, very much in the way of pasta and rice and potatoes and stuff like that. But a lot of that for me, and this is my personal reason for not doing it, is because of fluid retention. And funnily enough, when we were walking this morning, I have a habit of describing it as I eat low carb. I don't eat a lot of carbs. I don't really enjoy carbs. I don't favour carbs. And Joe said to me this morning, you know, can I talk about why I don't lean that way and it's because they bloat me right this is my personal journey that's what they do to me and joe said to me but of course what are they really called you say carbs what are they really called and i kind of looked at him like a bit of a thicker like i do regularly and he went carbohydrates right so go on joe tell me why they're called carbohydrates 
Because they hold on to water and hydrate your muscles. There you go. That simple statement was like somebody switching a light on in my head. Because every one gram of carbohydrate requires three to four grams of water to process and store it. So can anybody else put their hand up with me and say, now I understand why when I eat more carbs, I gain more weight. I'm not gaining fat, I'm gaining hydration, water. So say that again, every one gram of carbohydrates requires three to four grams of water to process and store it. So if I ate a 250 gram jacket potato, which would have however many grams of carbs in it, it's not all carb, is it? No. It would have a percentage of its weight is carbs. And then it needs three to four times that number of carbs in water, or weight, water weight. And this is like a revelation to me because all of my adult life on this weight loss journey, I've battled with carbohydrates or carbs as I call them. Now I can see a bit of why. Anyway, I didn't mention any of that in group, but what I did say when it got around to my turn, and this is where I feel passionate, right? I know I can get on a bit of a soapbox box sometimes, but I feel like today I want to get on a soapbox on Hyde Park Corner and shout this to the Slimming World community. Speed food is an amazing thing. I love cauliflower, cabbage, carrots, um, fruits, apples, pears, plums. At the moment we're eating blue whale plums and Angelina plums from Sainsbury's and oh my god they're delicious. They're speed. I also like blueberries, but I don't eat them every day the way I eat speed fruit every day. I tend to personally eat free fruit at weekends because that's when I've just got weighed. So like I'll eat mango on a Saturday and Sunday. I'd eat blueberries at weekends very occasionally in the early part of the week, but I manage it so that the majority of my fruit is speed fruit. Fortunately, the majority of the fruits I really enjoy, apart from mango and blueberries, are speed fruits. What I've realised when we sit in group time after time after time and we've all said it, when I say we've all said I've said it so many times, increase my speed. It's not as simple as eating more speed. Speed isn't a magic wand. It isn't the solution in isolation. The way that speed works for me today and the way Naomi explains it really well in our group is to improve the food on your plate and to reduce the calorie count of the food on your plate, you remove one third and you replace it with speed. Now, in group this morning, everybody was saying, increase my speed, add more speed, put speed at the side of my plate and all this stuff. That's not what Slimming World tells us to do. It tells us to reduce the free food, reduce the meat, the chicken, and that, that pea food. Reduce all that and replace that amount we've taken out with speed. And that's how it really works. Because if you do that, you're actually reducing the number of calories on your plate. But if you're putting on there, say, well for me it would be Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, mushrooms. I'm, like, I'm starting to really enjoy mushrooms. If I'm putting them on there, and I'm replacing the higher calorie stuff with that. And for me, you know, steamed cauliflower, steamed Brussels, steamed mushrooms have got filling power. And I tend to try and eat that first. That's how speed food works for me. Now, you might have a different understanding and I would love to hear it. I am prepared to listen to anybody's ideas and opinions because I can learn that way too. But when we talk about just increasing speed, adding speed, we don't talk very often about what we're prepared to take away to include it. And that was a point I raised in group this morning. If we're going to increase our speed food, which we, most of us talk about needing to do that, if we're going to increase our speed food, what are we prepared to get rid of? What are we prepared to replace? Excuse my stomach rumbling. What are we prepared to replace to add that speed? Because one lady in group this morning, I spoke about the perfect breakfast, perfect slimming world breakfast, which, you know, a lot of people would opt for, say, on a Sunday morning if they were short of time during the week. So you might have your bacon medallions 
um, grilled tomatoes, um, some Heinz baked beans, a couple of fried eggs, um, a Slimming World sausage or two, and some, if you Tess, a load of mushrooms, Tess, yeah? Perfect Slimming World breakfast. But then you hear people say, and I've said it, add some fruit. So maybe add a bowl of raspberries and an apple. And what I saw today in group with people describing this is, we're not adding speed food by doing that, we're adding calories. Because that was already a perfectly balanced, food optimized meal. So if we then add an apple and a pear, or a couple of satsumas and a bowl of raspberries, we can often be adding 100, 150 calories to a meal that is already food optimized. And if we start adding calories, however nice the fruit is, and however we call it speed fruit, if we're adding unnecessary calories, we're gonna slow down our weight loss. Now, this is my interpretation and my opinion. I see it at work every week in group, and I see people sharing and struggling the way I've shared and struggled for the last two and a half, no, not struggled. The way I've shared and learned and experienced things for the last two and a half years, I'm not gonna call this part of my journey a struggle because it isn't. I find doing Slimming World today the easiest way I've ever eaten. But it's because I've actually finally admitted that the food I eat today is the food I really, really enjoy and it's a pleasure to eat it. Now, you can have my last bar of chocolate, but you ain't having my last avocado. You could have my last packet of Rolos, but you're not having my last piece of veggie cheese. <laughs> well, I'm just so different, and I know today what I really, really enjoy. So, for me today, it's moderating the carbohydrates, it's keeping the sugars at a reasonable level, and it's eating speed food instead of free food. Not totally instead of, because I'd have both, but not just adding them on top, taking something away and replacing them. So, love some feedback on this. I'd love your experience, your opinions of how you do it, how it works for you, because your story may well be very different to mine, and somebody may learn from what you've got to contribute. So yeah, that's basically all I need to share today. I need to eat my breakfast, I need to go to Dunelm, and I need to soak in the bath. So I'm going to have a nice day. I hope you all have a nice day. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Thanks for your comments, which I anticipate will come. Have a great week, and remember, it works if you work it. It won't if you don't. See you next Saturday. Bye.